Welcome, welcome to another episode of Transformers The Basics. For this Halloween special, we explore the history of the most gruesome, most hideous, the most monstrous Autobots of them all, the Monster Bots. <clears throat> the Monster Bots were a trio of savage Autobots released in 1987. Each figure transformed into a bizarre creature, and all three could shoot sparks in simulation of fire breath. According to the commercial for the toys, their monstrous forms were the result of some kind of accident during their creation. Rodimus Quint, there's been an accident! The new Autobots are Monster Bots! They're monsters, all right! Decepticons! Monster Bots, attack! I'm glad those monsters are on our side. The Monsterbots were a group of misfits, generally unpopular with their fellow Autobots, and were made up of Repugnus, a foul-mouthed, insubordinate, antisocial insectoid monster who was repeatedly kicked out of the Autobots for his nasty attitude, only to be asked back because he was the only one who would take on dangerous, dirty counterintelligence missions behind enemy lines. Grotusk, a goofy, carefree, yet brilliant military strategist who considered everything in life to be a joke, and who disliked his own ugly alternate mode, a sort of bipedal, winged, saber-toothed tiger gargoyle. And Double Cross, an untrustworthy supply procurer with a split personality, who turned into a two-headed dragon. The dragon's two heads embodied his two personalities, and constantly disagreed with each other. The Monsterbots weren't featured in a lot of media during the 1980s. They appeared briefly in the Marvel comic book as part of a crew of Autobots led by Fortress Maximus, who left Cybertron for the planet Nebulos in an effort to escape the war. When the Decepticons followed them to their new home, Grotusk led the Monsterbots in defending Nebulos's Mercury Gardens against an attack. The team also showed up in the obscure and short-lived Transformers in 3D by Blackthorn Publishing, in which they battled the deadly alien mechanoids, the Destructons. The Monsterbots didn't make it into the original Transformers animated series, but they were featured in the Japanese original sequel cartoon, Transformers The Headmasters. This series included a crossover episode with the tie-in toy line Beastformers, or as it was known in Hasbro markets, Battle Beasts, which saw the Monsterbots help liberate the Beastformers' homeworld, Planet Beast, from the Decepticons. At the episode's end, the trio were stationed on Beast to help defend it against further threats, but they would make some brief appearances among the Autobots again later in the series, with Double Cross enjoying a few memorably silly scenes of his heads arguing with one another. For almost 30 years after that, there wasn't much to tell about the Monsterbots. They made only small, scattered appearances here and there. For example, in stories from the official Transformers Collectors Club and the Japanese-only Transformers PlayStation 2 video game. Easily their most notable appearance during these three decades was their guest starring role in IDW Publishing's 2008 comic book miniseries Maximum Dinobots. In this series, the Monsterbots were led by Repugnus, and their violent, unsavory ways had resulted in them being branded as outcasts, who now worked as mercenaries. Even the Dinobots considered them dangerous and excessive, but that didn't stop Grimlock from summoning them to Earth, where they helped battle the forces of Scorponok. During these years, Repugnus was lucky enough to receive a little more attention than his teammates, with two new toys of the character being released in 2006. One in the Transformers Universe toy line, a recolor of Beast Wars character Buzzclaw, which transformed into a lizard mantis hybrid, and another in Transformers Cybertron, a recolor of Cybertron Decepticon Undermine that turned into a Spinosaurus. In 2015, small, non-transforming figurines of Repugnus and Double Cross were available in the Tiny Titans line, though Double Cross was renamed Twinferno, due to the trademark on his original name being unavailable. But after these unremarkable showings, the Monsterbots finally made their big comeback in 2016's Titans Return toy line. 
in which brand new figures of all three members of the team based on their classic toys were released. These three toys shared the same gimmick as all figures in the Titans Return line, their heads disconnected and transformed into Titan Master minifigures. In a callback to the team's role in the Headmasters cartoon, each of the three was based on a Beastformer character. Twinferno's partner Daburu was based on White Leo, Grotusk's partner Fangle on Platinum Tiger, and Repugnus's partner Dastard on Hedgehog. Additionally, a standalone Titan Master figure of Repugnus himself was released, who transformed into an alternate head based on the character's animation model, with a miniature battle mech based on his creature mode. The new MonsterBot toys were also released in the Japanese toy line, Transformers Legends. But in this series, the Titan Masters weren't marketed as robots that just looked like Beastformers. They actually were the Beastformers themselves. The story behind this strange new partnership was told in the tie-in Legends manga, which continued the MonsterBot story from the Headmasters cartoon, and revealed how, while helping the Beastformers battle their enemies, the evil Laser Beasts, the MonsterBots had their heads cut off by the Laser Beasts' leader, Tigerburn, who then took control of their bodies and used them as weapons. To aid their friends, the Beastformers used the power of Elemental Gems, created by their ancient ancestors, the Three Wise Ones, to fuse with the MonsterBot's severed heads and become their Headmaster partners, then reclaimed their bodies from Tigerburn, reunited with them, and defeated the Laser Beasts. Later stories saw the MonsterBots possessed by the spirits of the Three Wise Ones themselves to defend Beast against a renewed attack from Galvatron and the Decepticons. The MonsterBots return to prominence soon led to the group's members appearing in other Transformers series as well. In 2017, two separate figures of Twinferno were released in the Robots in Disguise toy line, which reimagined his beast mode as a kind of two-headed dragon-themed jet fighter. And in 2020, a new toy of Repugnus was released in the Transformers Cyberverse line. As seen in the Cyberverse cartoon, this series version of Repugnus was a member of a subspecies of Cybertronian who dwelled in a prehistoric valley deep below the surface of Cybertron. Variously referred to as Monsterbots or Pesticons, these beings all shared Repugnus's insectoid design, and were all intelligent and well-spoken in robot mode, but primitive in their beast modes, as Bumblebee discovered when he visited their subterranean lost world and was almost eaten by the starving Repugnus and his tribe. Bumblebee would later discover that the power-hungry, elitist monster bot Affluus had employed a scientist named Technicus to build a machine that prevented the monster bots from transforming, trapping some in robot mode and others, like Repugnus, in beast mode. Affluus had then created a segregated society in which those in robot mode lived in a luxurious, energon-rich city of which he was supreme leader and those in beast mode were cast out into the wilderness. With the help of Grimlock and the repentant Technicus, B destroyed Affluus's machine and restored equality amongst the MonsterBots. A box set of multicolored Pesticon toys inspired by this adventure was also released in the Cyberverse line. The MonsterBots have spent most of their history as weird, underrepresented cult favorites, but now it's just poor old Grotusk who hasn't made the jump to greater recognition as part of any other series, but with his carefree attitude, he'd probably just write that off as another one of life's great jokes. And those are the Halloween basics on the MonsterBots. Let me know in the comments which one's your favourite. As always, like and subscribe for more Transformers history and lore, and if you can, consider supporting the series on Patreon to get early access to new episodes.